I'm going to talk, just finish off, because obviously we're at a cloud field day, I want to talk a little bit about what Veeam does for our cloud and service providers. So uh, I've got a couple in the room actually. We've got a very, very strong Veeam cloud and service provider program. So I'm going to spend some time, last 15 minutes, going over the differentiators um, with regards to the VCSP program, some of the differentiators in our technology, some of our integrations with vCloud Director, um, our replication technologies, and then finishing with a little bit of a preview as to what's coming. So before I start though, it's important to understand where we've come from with regards to Veeam. So let's make sure this renders okay, yes it does. So this is what I call our reverse roadmap uh, for VCSPs and effectively it can be a reverse roadmap for a lot of our technology releases. So you can see here, you know, as far back as 11 years ago now, we've released obviously version one with a number of features. The features in light green though, are the features that we tend to think as our innovative industry leading technology features, okay? Especially around the time of V4 and V5 when um, I was certainly introduced to Veeam the first time working for a cloud provider, understanding that our previous backup software wasn't doing the job, we looked at Veeam. When I first used Instant VM Recovery, it was like a revelation. It was like the first time that I used storage vMotion or you know, vMotion in VMware, right? Being able to instantly bring up that VM was just a panacea with regards to operating a backup platform for an infrastructure as a service um, provider. Through the years, you have a look here, we've actually started to increase the amount of techn technology and features that we've released in the product. So around 2013, 2014 with V7 is when we really kind of started to pump up the supportability for things like Fee Cloud Director. But for those that remember, we actually released a side product uh, in about 2013 called Backup Cloud Edition, which was effectively a Cloudberry reskin for those that remember it. Effectively, you know, took a backup file, kind of more like FTP, and shifted it into S3 or whatever it was at the time. Um, that was our first foray into kind of stepping out into that cloud world. Now, it took a couple of years, but effectively with V8, what we released is Cloud Connect Backup. And this is when our VCSP program took over and started to get legs. And as you can see, over the last sort of three or four years, we've had an extreme acceleration in terms of feature set for our VCSPs. <laughs> so you look at Cloud Connect Backup, things like IO Control, um, Cloud Connect One reporting for Veeam One, which is our re reporting tool. We introduced Cloud Connect Replication in version nine. If you look at the last four years though, the amount of different features in terms of the platform that we've released. So where else prior to 2018, you could say that Veeam had backup and replication in Veeam One. You know, that was the core product set. Since I joined two and a half years ago, we've gone from maybe four products to maybe 10 to 12, increasing this platform. And you can see here, the Veeam Availability Console, we talked about Veeam PN, Agent for Windows, Backup for Office 365. These are all our subsidiary products that we've released around the backup replications. So think about um, vSphere as a platform, think about everything that like VMware has. We're kind of building out that ecosystem around backup and replication and adding features around that core product in this platform. Um, and along the way is obviously N2WS acquired, increase and in iterations of each um, piece of technology, each product as we've moved along. More recently we released um, the update of Veeam Availability Console version 3 and last week we, uh, or the week before we introduced a new version of Veeam Backup for Office 365. What we're doing now is not just covering infrastructure as a service, we're covering DR as a service, backup as a service, everything you can think about, copying and protecting software as a service. We're basically built for our Veeam cloud and service providers, which is why we've got such a strong program. Is that um, the backup for Office 365, is that only, allow, only available for cloud service providers or is No, that? it's allowed for anyone. Um, it's obviously something that, you know, cloud service providers, like anything with our technology, basically take it and leverage it for themselves and turn it into as a service offerings. We release a lot of our products obviously to our end customers first and then our cloud providers can take the technology and turn it into those service offerings. So short answer to your question is no, it's available for everyone. Um, obviously cloud providers can offer as a service which makes it quite tangible and a good source of revenue for themselves. Well, I won't dra drain this slide too much, but effectively the one thing I wanted to point out was we, we talk about 22,000 VCSPs globally. It's a bit of an expanded number. It's basically everyone that's registered for a VCSP. The bigger and more important number is 3,500 active backup and DR as a service cloud providers. 
Now, when you think about the VMware Cloud Provider Program, it sits at about five to 6,000, they say the number. You can see that Veeam is very, very heavily entrenched in the cloud provider space in terms of those cloud providers who are using predominantly VMware in this case, but obviously Hyper-V as well, offering Veeam-powered infrastructure backups and obviously Cloud Connect replication and backup of the service. So we're trusted by a lot of cloud providers out there. And this diagram here is kind of like what I like to call the super overview of everything that we do as a service. Yes? So um, I saw it on a couple slides, the DR as a service. Um, and there was a question earlier about replication yep. and the capability of being able to do real-time replication, which is what I typically think of yes. with DR. So what component of your existing product catalog offers that DR as a service? I'm about to get into it. Um, but effectively, if you have a look here, so we've got what we call Cloud Connect. Cloud Connect is central to everything that we do. So our cloud providers basically deploy Cloud Connect infrastructure centrally. That Cloud Connect infrastructure then adds as the go-between between, between on-premises and the cloud end. It facilitates a number of services, which in a couple of slides I'll go into to show you exactly how important it is to the overall design of a Veeam-powered service. I mean, typically over here, we've got backup infrastructure components, we've got components for infrastructure as a service, we've got components for backup as a service, we've got VBO in there, which is backup for Office 365, availability console. Um, on the right-hand side, we've got networking. Again, we offer um, Cloud Connect edges, which do um, edge networking. We can leverage NSX technology from VMware as part of vCloud Director. And then on the left-hand side, we've talked about the object storage, we've talked about the, the capacity tier, and also tape as a service, which often gets forgotten, right? Um, tape is still very powerful. We still have a lot of our cloud providers offering tape as a service. And we actually enhanced that in update four by specifically allowing our customers who back into our cloud providers using Cloud Connect Backup, for then the providers to take that and basically tape out those backups to VTL technologies or tapes if they wanted to, okay? What this shows, again, is the flexibility of our software. The fact that as a provider, you don't really have to do all of this, you can do some of it. You can start small. You can start with backup as a service, very easy. Then you can go to replication or DR as a service. You can augment infrastructure as a service. And then you know, look at tape as a service and then you know, use the technology to do smart things with those backups and those replicas when they land at the cloud provider end. And what I want to quickly focus on as time runs out is the Cloud Connect gateways. Again, it's a single point for all cloud communications, okay? These are deployed um, as Windows machines. Um, there's a little service that runs on them. And basically, it's a bi-directional, I guess, endpoint from the on-premises to the cloud. Everything that is driven from the on-premises end connecting to a cloud provider is facilitated through these Cloud Connect gateways. Okay, they're bi-directional, which means we can initiate connections from either side. Once a tenant makes a connection to a cloud provider through the UI, they basically are hooked into the cloud end, which means if the cloud wants to send some information or initiate remote operations on the on-tenant, on the on-premises end, they can do that. On the flip side, if they want to start a backup or a replication job to a cloud, provider, it'll be from the other side. We've got built-in load balancing algorithms. Okay, so we've got smarts in there that understand when you deploy them in pairs or in threes, it understands how many connections are on one or do its own internal load balancing. Very scalable. Um, we say about 2,000 concurrent connections per a gig of assigned memory on these actual edge gateways themselves. Um, and a concurrent connection represents one job. Okay, so if we're doing a backup job, that's one. If we're doing agent jobs, which we can also do, so our, our agents have the ability to use Cloud Connect backup and send backups <coughs> to the cloud providers, that would be one particular job. So extreme, extremely scalable and obviously very secure. Gateway pools are just basically a way to allow logical groupings of these Cloud Connect gateways um, to facilitate uh, not just configuring with a public IP address, but lots of our cloud providers have internal IPing as well, direct connectivity to their customers, okay? Cloud Connect gateways, pools allow you to basically create these logical groups, assign gateways to the pools, and then assign tenants to those pools. So you get like a quality of service in a way to basically say, if a customer wants to go internally to connect in, you basically send them to a Cloud Connect gateway pool that is internally assigned. 
but if they want to come through the internet, you go to the externally facing one. Okay, just a way to do a very, very good quality of service for our customers. In terms of the features that utilize Cloud Connect, I've talked about Cloud Connect Backup to secure offsite backup, a very simple technology. Our cloud providers love this because it's very easy to set up and it's built into our software. Even in Community Edition, you can actually do backups using Cloud Connect to cloud providers for free, up to 10 instances, as Michael's talked about. Cloud Connect replication, very important. Being able to replicate in from vSphere Hyper-V um, into vSphere Hyper-V and vCloud Director tenancies as well. Um, full and partial failover orchestration, which is very important. And that full and partial failover is handled via those Cloud Connect gateways. So again, highlighting the fact that Cloud Connect gateways are central to everything that we're doing. We also have a remote management feature, which allows our managed service providers to basically hook back in to an on-premises tenant site and control either the Veeam backup replication console on-premises or actually a remote desktop in, all tunneled securely through Cloud Connect. In terms of the products that leverage Cloud Connect, our Veeam availability console, and if we had more time, I could spend a lot of time going and talking about the VAC, the Veeam availability console. It's basically our managed backup portal for um, our MSPs to go and control and manage, monitor, and, and look after their own tenancies, okay? It's a console, a separate one. They can go and log in, and they can do all that you can see there, remote backup and replication management, remote license management, remote machine discovery, they can deploy agents from the VAC onto on-premises and do policy-based control as well, all through the Cloud Connect gateways. Backup for Office 365 also leverages Cloud Connect. You can do self-service recoverability, which is done from the on-tenant side through Cloud Connect through that tunnel to pull emails and restore it single item or four mailboxes on-premises. And then like I've talked about, the Veeam agents and Microsoft Windows, being able to back up physical virtual cloud workloads using Cloud Connect to the cloud provider itself. So again, Cloud Connect is a big differentiator. No one actually offers a service or a feature like Cloud Connect out there. And I can say that with absolute truth, okay? It's why our cloud providers love us, is this particular feature. Cloud Connect replication with VCD, it's obviously something that I'm pretty proud of. Um, so we were the first to market with this. When VCD was, it was released, um, there wasn't a lot that backed it up directly. There wasn't a lot that backed up the metadata and basically constructs of vCloud Director. Veeam was one of the first ones to do that, okay? Um, and I've got a couple of slides that lead into that before. But in terms of Cloud Connect replication, with Update 4, we released the ability to basically replicate into a vCloud Director tenancy. The big thing about that is we can leverage NSX, okay? Where else now when someone's doing a, a full failover of their cloud, they've now got the ability to front those replicas with NSX, which gives them all the advanced options that you see on the screen there. Very, very important from the point of view of when you're dealing with DR, you guys know that networking is absolutely the hardest thing to achieve, okay? You can replicate quite easily. That's not the problem. We've kind of solved that in the industry. Making the networking work is the hardest component of that. We have the full and the partial failover. The partial failover is by far one of the best features of Cloud Connect replication. And this was a demo that I was going to show, and unfortunately I'm not going to be able to show it, but I'll basically talk to it in a minute. Effectively what we're doing is we're using our own network extension appliance. We've talked about our networking heritage. We do it in data labs, we do it in VPN. We've got the network extension appliance, which effectively is deployed at the cloud side and the tenant side. What we then do is we bring up both appliances through the Cloud Connect gateway, we extend the tenants network into the cloud network, and that allows the failover of a particular workload. And when it's brought up at the cloud side, there's no re-IP, there's no nothing that you have to do. It's still got the internal IP address as if it was running on-premises, but it's running in the cloud. Using those NEAs, we've extended that network automatically and orchestrated without any intervention from you guys. No need to set up complex IP6, layer two VPNs. Okay, again, this is a huge differentiator. There's almost no one in industry that has DR as a service and with partial failover leveraging this automation technology. All right, as I talked about, we first to market with vCloud Director support in version seven. Very innovative, got out there in 2014 ahead of the curve. Basically, I to back up vCloud Director, all the metadata, restore all the metadata, which is very important in vCloud Director. We then brought out, in 2016, our own self-service portal, okay? This is again, 
was a first to market in terms of being able to self-service, self-drive as a separate portal, your vCloud Director. So for customers that were offering vCloud Director, they could leverage this to their own customers to offload a lot of the work that comes with recovering backups, file level recoveries, all that stuff. Big question of late is, are we going to introduce a tenant portal? Because vCloud Director in version 9x has a tenant plugin UI. Okay? Now obviously because we're a first to market with these previous features before VMware knew what they were going with vCloud Director, we delayed a little bit on the start of the development of our native plugin. Okay? That is in the works. Understand that it isn't in the works and it is going to come. But suffice to say, we've got a rich history with vCloud Director already. Okay? So very proud of that. What we're able to do is basically leverage our smart partners to basically do a point in time standalone feature. So if I play this, what you're seeing here is the tenant UI for vCloud Director, <coughs> but we've basically embedded the self-service portal into that tenancy, okay? So using the plugin to actually build it into the native UI. Now, this isn't our work, and in fact, one of the guys sitting in the room, Chris Arsenal, is basically the one that got this going through our great partner, SIS. As an example of what we can do with our APIs and our automation, okay? This is gonna be basically a stand-in. All of our customers can basically access solutions like this before we go and actually get the native UI up and running later on in the year. There we go. Hey. Okay, <laughs> so there's all our details. Um, we've got a few Q uh, QR codes here. The one that I wanted to point out massively was Veeam Hub. Again, that's our area we can go and get all the cold code samples. It's an open source community. We all contribute to it. There's a lot of examples of doing automation, orchestration with APIs, with PowerShell and all that kind of stuff. Veeam Community Edition, there's N2WS in terms of the fee free backup and trial. You can get a free trial up to $200, I think, basically. There's all of our information. We had to rush. Thank you very much, guys. It was a pleasure being able to produce here. Thank you.